goodbye. <laughs> Wallet, have mercy. <laughs>Monday, July 1st, it is our 97th episode, and I am Al. And I'm Nick. Creeping ever closer to 100. I, I almost one can't zero, believe zero. it. <laughs> That's a lot of I, episodes. I almost, it really is. I almost can't believe it. And uh, it's funny, I was just chilling the other day and went to the very beginning of our feed, and I went back to like the first episode that me kyle and travis did mm -hmm. and, and it is funny like you always sit there when you do something like this regularly you're like you know are we really that different like did we learn anything oh yeah we <laughs> yeah yeah we've we've definitely sharpened our tools over there have we learned nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah definitely learned a few things <laughs> but uh no it was it was an interesting you know journey back and then like i i added a i queued a couple more i queued up your first episode i'm actually going to be listening to that this week <laughs> but it all just kind of bubbles down to like we are coming up on this big milestone of 100 episodes and uh yeah i don't know i'm trying to think of something cool that we can do you got a good idea about maybe doing some kind of on-site uh get together that sounds like a cool idea i don't know i'm, I'm just like like, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> it's like we should do something. A hundred seems special. <laughs> but uh yeah, then I, what have you been up to, man? Oh, not much. You know, just you know, survive surviving the heat waves for what? Oh, <laughs> Holy was like crap. Awful, wasn't it? That was terrible. It was like blistering hot and then just like crazy humidity. And it's like it, it was so nice today. It's like ooh, oh it's today was perfect like good nice wind it wasn't too warm it's like yeah there we go yeah no today was was exactly the way i like it <laughs> like it could be like this all year round and i will never <laughs> complain exactly don't you miss the four seasons no this right here is perfect <laughs> but uh yeah no it, that heat wave was brutal man like even my kids who were the first to like oh go outside and run around please all right yeah go ahead they're like, yo, we're going to go up in our room, turn on the air conditioner, play PlayStation. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cool, I'm right behind you. <laughs> yeah, I wound up giving the kids my uh, my PS5 because I, I just never play it anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had it sitting in my office, actually hooked into my com computer monitor, just like, ah, oh, maybe I'll play a game on a lunch break. Yeah, it just sat under there. Like, I, I, I the last thing I bought on it, I think, was the... Final Fantasy 16, whatever the late latest one was, or late, latest single player one, whatever. Yeah, the latest single player one. I played that for all of like three hours and was like, meh, and just put it down. And then I don't know. I I feel like I feel like Final Fantasy is 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 losing something with me. I I I don't know. And it's weird because like my brother in law came up recently, and I started playing through. Um, Final Fantasy 4? I think it was the fourth one. He was telling me it was really good and I should give it a look. And so I did, and I'm like really enjoying it. So it's like it's not the series, but there's just something with the new ones that mm -hmm. it is not clicking with me, man. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you've kept up or played them at all, but No, I, I think uh, <laughs> funny enough, I think 9 was the last one uh, single one, single player version that I played. I love 9. 9 was a good one. Yeah, uh, nine was definitely one of my favorites. And I, th I think I may have dabbled with the others, like yeah, uh, you know, either playing at PAXs or demos or something. And yeah, just like okay, it's, it, you know, it's not grabbing me. You know, yeah, maybe this, maybe this game isn't for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I lost. <laughs> I guess. But uh, but yeah, then I I don't know. It's we're basically packing, getting ready for you know our vacation, which I'm I'm so ready for. 
and uh, just <laughs> going I to the beach wait. again. Yeah, yeah, going to the beach, our same usual spot, the nice. house with the pool, you know, and just I just need to disconnect and be as far away from work as possible. Sure. <laughs> and just, and just relax. Like I just like this is the place we uh, we all go to to recharge. So everybody, I think, is just really looking forward to it. But we we did just have a really great weekend, and mainly just me and me and Amber. The kids actually wound up going with my in laws, uh, starting Saturday morning. They they took them on this like trip up to World's End, and then they wound up. Um, oh no, the Saturday they just went to the my in laws' house. And they hung out, watch movies, because then Sunday they're going to get up early and go to World's End. And so they did that, and they're spending the day, and we got a call at, like, four in the evening saying, hey, do you mind if we keep them another day? <laughs> and it's like, oh, so no more. <laughs> I mean, don't twist my arm. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they were like, oh, we, we got a really great deal at the hotel up here. And we're like, yeah, no problem. They're like, it's got a pool. They're going to they go swimming. So Amber and I got to have like this really nice weekend to our, you know, to to ourselves together. And it just so happened to be uh, like the anniversary of our first date 12, uh... years, 12 years ago on Saturday. Couldn't believe that. It's like, wow, it really has been a long time. <laughs> That's awesome. It was. And, you know, our our. Our second wedding anniversary is coming up uh, in two weeks as well. I know we were together a long time before we got married, but, um, but yeah, it was just, it was really nice to hang out. And, um, she had kind of, she'd kind of jumped on the, the train halfway through the ride with uh fallout. I was probably on the last two episodes. Mm, she, mm -hmm. she was kind of like paying attention more and more. And the other day she was like, you know, if, if you wouldn't mind doing a rewatch, I'd really like to check that out. <laughs> I was like, no problem. Good, good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, we just started rewatching it uh, this weekend. And have you done that yet? Like, have you, I know you watched it, but have you done a rewatch yet? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Like, uh, kind of, you know, I watched it, you know, fully paying attention. And then I think I threw it on just like as a background thing when I was playing something. Uh, Holy yeah. hell, do you pick up on things? Like, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there, there's there's a ton of lore stuff, um, and, and we were kind of talking about it a little bit uh, in in the chat room. That, yeah, and and I I stand by this. Like, uh, it, it's probably one of the best series uh, adaptations of a game. Oh, the best! I wouldn't even say one of the best. It is the best. I don't think, like, I cannot readily name an adaptation of a video game that even comes close. Like now I've seen the last of us. Oh, you know what? I didn't finish that, but I would say that uh, the first episode that I did watch was, was pretty goddamn spot on. Yeah. Like, um, like and, the, and the way I kind of frame it is like the last of us, uh, I feel does the best one-to-one -one story. Like they, they almost take it, you know, uh, I say word for word from, you know, the okay. game story plot line, you know, you know, beats and whatnot, and put it to live action. I, oh, wow. I think I think that's one of the one of the best, you know, uh, adaptations of the story. Yeah, you um, did mention that. I gotta watch that. Uh, and then I, I you know, I, I put you know, Fallout is in the same category, but there's there's uh well there is stories uh, obviously in all the games, but uh they they introduce completely new characters there's yep. no there's no there's like, like you said like you, you're catching things and like there's like these uh, you know easter eggs there's no cameos but there's like little little like you know a, a little uh plot you know uh, oh you know, yeah get there's here a lot. <laughs> uh you know a little, little name drop there type of thing um and so, you know, like they do, like they they do an absolutely spot on job of like recreating the world of Fallout, and yeah. and with that, creating a uh, giving you a, a great com you know compelling story to go along with. Oh it. hell yeah! That you haven't played before. So, as a player, and, and you know, it, depending on how many you've played, and you know how, how you know how much you pick up on the lore stuff, it's like you have all these like little, little, again these little little tidbits dropped here and there. It's like oh. I, I recognize that from from this game or or this mm -hmm. comment here, uh, but they but they don't do it in such a way that it's it's completely you know it's like you know someone who has never played 
is completely lost and it, it just it just sounds logical it's like oh okay yeah like it seems to fit the world it's like well that's actually in a game it's like oh yeah okay. <laughs> i i love um, and you know because after we had done last week's episode i had um that night i started playing fallout one again i was like nice. oh, i haven't touched this in years i haven't touched that i, I need to replay that <laughs> oh well dude like as soon as you leave the vault in the beginning i'm like holy fuck it's shady sands like true that's, true yeah that's you're right first, that's the yeah, first right. settlement that you first run town, into. yeah and i was like holy shit like it all just kind of like really hit me so when we did the rewatch i was like oh wow like there's a whole layer to that but yeah in the very first fallout game when you leave the vault for the first time it's the first town you'll run into on your way to like the main thing the main quest yeah you know i don't want to i don't want to like spoil it i mean jesus christ <laughs> it's fucking decades at this point but um but yeah that was actually i loved what they did with that and how they tied that that all back together and um and then of course you know the end with, oh yes uh, oh, oh yeah. my god like yeah I, like, it make, makes me eager to like you know what are they gonna do with season two and they and they have said you know it's like everything is in uh uh what, what do they canon. say um in canon thank you yeah uh, i was like in lore but that's not, not exactly yeah in but canons they, but it, but it's like it, it, uh, it's it's after I think all the games have taken place. Uh, so I think so. Um, I think so. The, the, I know. I know it's somewhere on on the internet or whatever. They have the someone's like mapped out the timeline and and so you know that that you know it, as all lore hunters you know like and the internet you know it's like there there was a kerfuffle like you know there, there's a there's a point like halfway through the series where they actually do have like dates and stuff. Uh, yeah. in, a, in a classroom setting, I'll, you know, it's not too spoilery, but it's a classroom setting and they have some dates. Right. Um, but I, th I think they, you know, and even the way I interpreted it, it was, it was kind of the same way where it's like, th this is how they perceive history. Yeah, not necessarily exactly. exactly what happened or whatever. So it's like, you know, it's like, it's like ease off the throttle and like, yeah, Oh yeah. my God, this pixel's out of place. <laughs> Easy Lord. <Kent>. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and but I loved they really answered one of the the longest running questions in the game series that Todd Howard and Bethesda had been mum on for years. They would mm. never give an answer to it. Was is New Vegas canon? Well, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> like, like holy shit! And I started playing through that again. And Not... let me tell you, that is a fucking great game. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> oh, it's funny to say because obviously it was Obsidian, uh, you know. Obviously, like Bethesda provided all the, you know, assets and lore and all that. But funny enough, it was Obsidian. I, I'd say, uh, like, that is one of my favorites. Probably followed really closely oh. by three, only because three was my re-entry into it after you know, yeah, same years. Yeah, um, and three three is really enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I it's love like, three. But New Vegas, yeah, it's like I don't know, it, it just hit all the right notes, and oh. obviously, obviously, all of them could be modded. But I think uh, I think New Vegas has the most mods. I think. Or yeah, I think New Vegas uh, did. That was one of the most active, and like, oh man, it just, I I, th I think it resonates for you the same reason it resonates for me is like Fallout 3 and 4, they kind of have this Old West feel where New yes. Vegas was like, this is fucking apocalyptic Old West. Yes, and, yeah. Oh. And, and, they, and they recaptured it, that that oh, yeah, that apocalyptic Old West with the series too. So I, oh, and they I nailed it. I, and I think that's why I, I like doubly enjoy it. It's like, okay, it feels very much in the same vein. Whereas like, yeah, it's like, uh, was it Fallout 4's Boston, right? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it wasn't bad. But I don't know. It, it never, it never, it never grabbed me like you know two mm. and or uh, three in uh, or yeah, three. I, I say three in New Vegas. It, it, yeah, that's three in New out. Vegas. Were, were <laughs> um, but you're, you're as far as like okay, it was it was fun. I enjoyed it for what it was. But yeah, it never it never had that you know. I think what three in New Vegas provided where it's like yeah, like it's the wild you know wild that's west. I was got like, a wild you're, west you're, feel. You're the gunslinger, yeah. you know, so to speak. You know, come to town. Uh, and, and, oh, you're right they nailed that in the show though i oh, mean yeah. especially oh, yeah. especially at the end where he's like if we're doing a, i've been waiting 200 years to ask this someone this question where's my fucking family like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's go season two <laughs> holy shit what a perfect cast for that whole show
Oh yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. Walter Goggins, like he, he's like good in any role he steps into. He just nails it. But I feel uh, like this is the one where it's like he really showed off. Like this, this guy needs to be in more shit. Like he, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> holy hell, is he versatile? And just like when you really think about it, like you, the whole series and the evolution of his character mm-hmm. is so believable, but so good. Like. When you start watching that, you're like, I don't, I don't think I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it was, yeah, it's like a lot of it's like, oh, I don't know where I stand with him. It's like, he's kind of cool. And then sometimes he does some really he's asshole things, really but he's kind of cool. <laughs> and, then, like, and then, you know, by the time they wrap up the scenes, you're like, this is the fucking greatest character ever made. <laughs> Troop rule. <laughs> Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. It's and it's been very fun to rewatch with my wife. I'm 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 really looking forward to going through and finishing that. But uh, it, she was the one that called it when when we were she was watching the finale with me. She's like, "Is that Vegas?" And I went, "Holy fuck, it's Vegas!" And like that, was it. <laughs> I I fucking I fucking lost it. I was like, "Yes, it's fucking Janet." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was great. But yeah, so I've uh, been doing that and um, I've been playing some games. I, I haven't been playing too much, but I've been I've been on my usual uh, Total War Warhammer 3 kick. I, I just never get tired of that game. And then um, what was the one I was? Oh, thank you to not. Well, this one's not Game Pass. This was just the first uh, of my wallet falling victim to the Steam Summer Sale. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your wallets. Hide oh, your cards. <laughs> it's on, folks. It's on. <laughs> Holy hell, is it on? But um, and then well, I don't know. There was not too much as grabbing me, but this one did because I was always like, this kind of looks interesting, but I don't want to spend any, you know too much money on it. And I think I got it for like the full game and all the DLC for like nineteen bucks. But I got nice. that uh that Rake City or Rake City. Rake um, City. Hold on. I better get the actual name. Crime, <laughs> Crime Boss Rock A City. Okay. It's the one with uh what's his name? Not Michael Ironside. Oh, um oh, I know what you're talking about. It's with the whole cast, but let me tell you, they phone it in. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I know I know which one and it, oh, he was in Kill Bill, right? Yes. Oh. And best of the best, that karate movie. He yeah, was in yeah, yeah. Hold on, I haven't got to look him up now. Um, he's in. He's in so much shit. He just died, though, as I understand it. Oh, did he? I think Michael Madsen. Uh, Michael Madsen. Yeah, he's in it. And uh, uh, I think he, he died. No, he's, he, no, he's he's still alive. I think. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, he's still alive. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I thought he died. But uh, yeah, he's okay. Good, he's still around. I was sad. <laughs> But um, he's the main character. It's kind of like a, a heist game in the sense of the games like Payday. Kind of got mm-hmm. a similar feel to that, although I never really got into those games. But what I'm liking about this one, a aside from the price, is like there's a whole roguelike campaign to it where like you do, you do your run, you start building up the cash, and if you 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 know run a mission as the as Michael Madsen's character you get like a bonus to the loot that you pull out, but if you die with him and he dies, the, the campaign's over and you got to start over. Ah. And, but there's a whole bunch of meta progression where, you know, depending on how far you get and the things you can unlock, you can unlock things to make your next attempt at taking over the city easier. I, I dig that, like that roguelike loop. Mm-hmm. And the, the missions are fun. It's, it's, you know, everything from like doing an actual heist to, uh, ambushing rival gangs to take their territory, defending your own territory. Um, the gunplay is pretty good. Like it's 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 a good game. Like it's not anything too special, but uh, I've had some fun with it. But I will say my main criticism, quite possibly the worst voice acting <laughs> I've ever encountered, and the reason that it's so bad is because of the cast, like. This is Michael Madsen, Danny Trejo, Chuck Norris, which I don't think he could have sounded more disinterested in doing this part <laughs> than he does. Probably more like, Chuck, read this. 
he is so bad in this because he plays like the badass cop that's like leading the task force to take you down. Okay. And in the intro or like after the intro mission, when you like pull off your first heist, they're like flying him in. They're like, this is the situation. It's gang war. And and we need, you know, it's someone to of your caliber to step in, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, okay, <laughs> let's get to it. Walker, and then he jumps Texas out of Ranger. The, let's get to it. And then he just jumps out of the helicopter and I'm like, holy fuck. If that's the best he's got, we are we're in for a long ride. And, uh, it doesn't get better from there. And in fact, I'd say it gets wow. worse. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> So if you can blot all that out, I hell, if you're able to turn off the speech track, you'll probably enjoy it just reading the subtitles and filling in your own Chuck voices. <laughs> um, but that said, it is a fun game, and it's it's very cheap on the Steam sale to get it with like all the DLC. And it sounds like it did really well uh, with the Steam sale. And I guess like it started out, it was pretty lukewarm on reception. People were kind of eh. But then I guess Payday 3 fucking sucked horribly, whereas, like, the developers on this team have kept adding to it, patching it, making new stuff, and now everybody's like, well, this is what Payday 3 should have been, and this is fun, and, like, I guess they they gangbustered on the the Steam summer sale, and now they got Mm. all kinds of, like, all kinds of plans for the game, so I'll be interested to see where it goes and what they do, but, um, the, the last one for me, and then I'd love to hear what you've been playing, but uh, I noticed on Game Pass, um, on both PC and Xbox, the latest entry, at least at the time when I found it, was Robin Hood Sherwood Builders. I saw and that. I saw that. Is that any good? I, I don't understand why more people aren't talking about this game. <laughs> like, I'm really enjoying it. And the reason I'm liking it so much is it is specifically a single player game. It's like, I thought it was one of those age of Con- or uh, not age of Conan, Conan uh, exiles, Conan exiles that, yeah. you know, style games. And I just can't get into that, that server based shit. Cause like, mm. cause I gotta be able to step away. Sure. And it's awesome. Like you, it, there's the whole like base building mechanic of like, you're building Sherwood. Like you, there's, you were hiding somewhere else. Major step, you know, we came home from the Crusades. It's kind of the whole Robin Hood setup, but much darker. And um, you start building out like Sherwood, and and but there's there, there's a solid RPG, entire systems in the mix, uh, progression. The the map for the game is is huge. There's basically four main regions that you have to like do quests and missions and things for people in to build up your reputation to a certain point where that region will then join you and take up arms against the sheriff and the king. And, um, I, I'm loving it. Like it is, it's got some jank. It's got some kind of Valheim ish jank to it, uh, but nothing that's ever ruined anything for me. I mildly pissed me off. Like at one point, cause like I was mining off a rock and then like the pieces break off. And those are the ones you, you know, you pick up. Except mm-hmm. it just fell and went directly under the rock, and I couldn't get the fucking pieces, so I was pissed. <laughs> but, um, but it's it's really fun. It looks really good. Like the the representation of Sherwood is beautiful. Um, the base building I, I'm having a lot of fun with. Uh, even the archery, like it took me a while to get it. My wife thought it was hysterical watching me try to hunt deer. She's like, look, they're running right past you and flipping you off. I'm like, I can't fucking. <laughs> but it turned out like I forgot that there's all these mechanics meant to help you. Like I was just trying to pull back and shoot them, but like Robin Hood can do like a, a slow down, you know, slow motion. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier to aim and take them down. Um, you have like hunter vision to like, like really see you know, enemies or, or deer, whatever you want to hunt. Like you got to like hunt food for the camp and, and you build like I've so far, I've built an alchemist hut, a uh, furnace and a tracker. And not only do they unlock other things for you to build, but they unlock abilities for you. Like, oh. um, so like, you know, like when I built the tracker hut, I unlocked, you can use a skill point to unlock different tracker skills. But then there's the regular skill tree between like bow, stealth, 
health and sword play. And it's a massive fucking skill tree. Like if you if you pull it up and you just look at a Sherwood Builder skill progression, it is a deep game. And like I don't know. Like I'm really shocked nobody is talking about this game. Like I, I don't know who's one of the YouTubers I watched was saying the same thing. They're like, this game is really fun. Why isn't anyone talking about this? <laughs> So yeah, Robin Hood Sherwood Builders has been a really nice surprise. I've been playing it. I played a bunch of it on Saturday. I played for hours, like with the kids being gone. You know, I was just sitting in the living room and just having a blast with it. Like beautiful weather, time of day systems, and just it's fun. I highly recommend it. I think you'd like it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like like oh, this looks interesting. I'll have to check this out when I have time. <laughs> yeah, just like especially the stuff I know you play, like grounded and all that stuff. It's oh kind yeah, of got, yeah, yeah. You know, I think you'll like it a lot. But what what have you been up to? So I've I've been kind of returning to uh, older games, uh, you know, kind of you know <laughs> I think the nice. same as you more or less. Uh, one uh, kicked off a Shadow of War uh, this weekend on stream. Oh, I love uh, that. Game. Yeah, like yeah, I played the hell out of uh, Shadow of Mortar way back, and I never got around to picking up Shadow of War. I like I have no idea why. Just just whatever. Uh, How do you but, like it so far? Oh, oh yeah, it, it brought me back to like all the <laughs> all the fun of you know like the nemesis system. I'm getting my face, you know, it's like I'm getting my face pushed in, and suddenly I have to like venge myself and you know, all this stuff. It's like it. yeah, total blast. And best of all, it's two bucks on Steam sale right now, so it's like oh, how about that? If you're listening and you don't have it and you like Shadow uh, of Mordor or were interested, it's on your wish list. Oh, Now's the time wow. to get it. Two bucks is like it's like steal. two bucks for the game, five bucks for the whole game of the year edition with all the expansions. So it's like no excuse. Like oh, <laughs> you can't wow. can't even get a burger for that much. <laughs> no, you actually can't, and I can vouch for that. <laughs> Holy shit, that's really great. Yeah. Uh so yeah, have, having a blast with that. Um jumping back into satisfactory is kind of like you know my chill out zen and chill out game again uh um, that's your zen and chill out game that game gets me fucking anxious <laughs> really you're just building the factory stuff um oh i might be thinking of factorio yeah yeah factorio like obviously like things come out yeah, because that's partially like defense stuff but yeah, yeah satisfactory like yeah there there are like some bugs that pop out of like nest but it, you know you can take care of that pretty quickly um, yeah, so yeah, satisfactory is, is very, very much Zen for me, uh, only because uh, it is uh, they have been teasing going 1.0 later this year. They haven't given a oh, date yet. Oh, nice. Uh, my guess is now that we're like on the you know now at the halfway point of the year, I'm thinking it's going to be Q4. Uh, like their latest video, they kind of tease that they're you know they, they may be talking about a date we're soon. We're talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been talking about like 1.0 all year. Like they, they've said, like oh, they this, have. this okay. is the year that they're releasing Satisfactory, but they haven't set a date yet. Um, but the latest videos have been like, you know, we're we'll, we'll, we're not ready to talk about it yet. You know, or the release date yet. Uh, but we may talk about the date soon ish. So I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's gonna be a Q4 thing. Um, if they do any earlier, it'll be I'll be super surprised and pleased. Um, yeah, but right. um. But yeah, uh, and speaking of which, it, again, another game. If you have on your wish list for Steam, uh, and, and this, this is a big note. One, it's fifty percent off. It's only so that's like fifteen bucks. So it's like, oh, wow. yeah, that, that that's quite the deal. But after the Steam sale ends, their price will go up uh, to I think uh, forty bucks. I think it's like thirty bucks normally. Uh, so it's going to go up to forty bucks. Still not a bad price. Uh, but it makes sense because they have added a chameleon things since, you know, when they went early access, I don't know, even when, like what, 2018, 17, something. Is this on Steam or on Epic? Uh, I think it's on both. I have it on Epic because that's where it first came out, uh, but it is on Steam. Uh, the Steam oh, sale okay. has it 50% off right now. Uh, but when the Steam sale ends, uh, it's going to jump to 40 bucks. So now you know, it's like, if you're listening and it's been on your list and you don't have it yet, like now's the time to jump on it uh, because the price will go up uh, after the steam sale. Do you my heart continue to pay? <laughs> Bye. Uh, before Want I it have mercy? <laughs> before I, I take the plunge, does it run on Steam Deck? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't tried. 
let me look into that because that might be the deciding. I factor. I would think so. Like it's not it's not super intense, and they they they've done a lot to optimize uh, the game. Like it used to be like way back in the day, you could have like a whole dune full of factories, and it would like be all chunky monkey. But like you can set up like layers and layers of stuff, and it has, actually has pretty good optimization to it. So, um, let me Does, just... it, wouldn't it say on the thing if it's uh. Oh yeah, I think. Well, lower everything to low. Let me just see if it's on the Steam page, like with the compatibility rating there. If it says playable, yeah. I will so, grab it. Yeah, Steam Deck is playable, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, because, yeah, that would be a fun one to get into uh, when I'm on. Yeah, yeah another no, another one. perfect one. Yeah, you just, like, zen out and build your factory and <laughs> in first person. In, you know? in bed, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I think I'm going to grab it. Cool. Install. Thank you. Right. <laughs> another yeah. satisfied customer uh, thank you gave it another victim to this <laughs> but yeah yeah just having a ton of uh fun with that um I, I'm, I'm eager to see like they, they've already stated like some of the nodes will move around from now till 1.0 or, right. or rather when 1.0 launches i should say <laughs> things aren't going to move in, in between um but i'm kind of eager to see like okay how how much is going to be saved and or you know like i'm wondering if i'll just like kind of restart to give it a completely fresh you know 1.0 experience uh but nonetheless like again it's just it's just a super chill game and, and then oh. um still playing phasmophobia with with the crew and a new new lighthouse map came out uh uh just this week uh, actually. oh oh okay i was gonna say um oh wow i i was just looking at that a bit is it, all right just tell me this is it as fun as it looks because holy shit uh I, well i mean it's 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 an it's another fast so instead of like you know most of the fast phobia maps are pretty you know, it's like, uh, you know, houses, there's the high school, which is, you know, very large, but, it, you know, it's it's kind of wide is the best way to describe it. The lighthouse right. uh, is not very big in terms of its well, that's foot, why footprint, yeah. but it's it's like eight floors <laughs> going straight up. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I'm like, it reminds me of that Ghost Hunters episode when they were in that Fort Lauderdale lighthouse. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was all, it's like something straight out of it. It's like the lower levels is where, like, you know, the, the like the family room and the kitchen are at. And then you, you keep going up and it's like, you know, the, the parents' bedroom and you keep going up to the kids' bedroom. And then it's like the, you know, the, then it's like a wine cellar thing. And then in, at the very top is like a, a workshop. And then you actually get up to the very top with the light. Uh, you know, and you know, yeah, if you crank the power on, then it's like the thing rotates, it's like so cool. Hmm, that must be interesting. I'd like to speak to the manager. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, yeah. That was a reference for anyone that missed it back in the one of the extra life campaigns that we did where I played with uh Nick and the crew. We played <laughs> yeah. for hours. <laughs> And I, I forget which one of your friends said it, but when I was running from the ghost and then hiding right when ran, ran right back in the same room and hit by the bed, he's like, I don't know how you walk around with that big set of balls you carry. Around. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just got fucking lost and turned around and hoped for the best. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, no, that's cool, man. I love that that game is still going on. Is that is it still technically early access or is it like release released? Um, good question. Let me see. I, I think it's considered out out. Um, so I feel like when I was playing with you guys, it was page. early access yet. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's still. Oh early. no, no, still no. I take that back. Still or labeled early access. Yeah, I take okay. that back. Yeah. No, that that is uh, a really fun game. Like that one. The stuff they did with audio in that game really impressed me. I, I, I still say when you were like, don't say anything. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Ghost will, will zero in on you. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I th I'd say audio is a is a integral part of it, you know, because even even like the ambience, um, like some of the levels, yeah. uh, oh, like yeah. the, the asylum. Asylum is super spooky. Like, if they took oh, out dude. the ghosts, it's still super it's spooky because like, there's just yeah. like these clinking noises and just groans and it's just like what is going on oh yeah that that one i played with you guys uh during one of the very recent extra life uh campaigns and that was fucking terrifying oh yeah like, 
we will usually save that till the wee hours of the morning when I need the shit scared out of me to keep me awake. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that one did not end well for me. I, I remember throughout our many attempts, I kept being scared to death. Uh, but yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I'm glad to see that that's uh, that's still going strong. Let's see what else do we got. Oh, yeah, uh, some other stuff that I was playing. I played this one a while back, and I think I mentioned it to you before, but uh, Sailing Era, I started playing that again, and I've been oh, playing that off and yeah. on. How that, is that? That's on my wish list. Did you ever play Uncharted Waters? I don't think so. Yeah, there was, there was, uh, it was on PC, but it was also on the Sega Genesis, um, and Super Nintendo, I think. And... It's a it, and this game too. It's all set during the age of exploration, you know, the mm-hmm. age of sail. And you know, you you pick a character from one of the different nations. Like there's a Portuguese explorer, or you know, uh, uh, an Arabian shipwreck diver. Like there's all kinds of uh, really neat things. But like, it's the real world map, and like you're discovering ports as you go. Like the map mm. of the world is still like very shittily drawn and the, the oh nice now first... does it resemble resemble the, the real world or yes okay yep but um uh, but like the maps you have in the beginning uh are not good and so like you'll start out the portuguese one the main goal for that character is to become the gr- world's greatest navigator and circumnavigate and map the world you know or, or map the world as you go mm-hmm. and you start out like in lisbon and you start doing just some simple story missions to kind of get your feet wet and you'll you'll sail north up the coast south up the coast then like you'll go for one mission it'll take you to uh, madeira and then like the azores but you start like eventually you'll start going down the coast of uh 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 jesus christ spain and france like you know well Portugal, I guess technically, right, right and, then, yeah. and then you can like go into the Mediterranean and and explore all through there, or keep going south and you can start exploring the coast of Africa right to like if you go to sail around the Cape, like you better bring extra timbers because you're gonna get the shit blown out of you from the weather. Like, yeah, that's true. It was a, uh, not Magellan. Uh, 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 good hope. I good forget. hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's in the game and like a lot of the the landmarks you can find and be the first person to find and like document and draw. Like one of the first ones you'll find as part of the story missions for that character are the Pillars of Hercules. And like, oh, this is where it is and this is what the mythology is and like you you bring it back and you get money for your discovery and it's very fun. Like if you are into that kind of age of sail stuff, it is a very chill game, but it's got like ship combat you know you can fucking go pirate if you want to and and just kind of chart your own course um but i've i've thoroughly enjoyed that game and i've I've been playing that off and on for probably the better part of a year and a half oh wow yeah it's it's very good it's it's definitely what i love to pick up get really into and zone out you know definitely a zen kind of game i I like me my zen games (laughs) it's, it's good and then uh Let's see, what was the other one I wanted to tell you about? Oh, and then this one's been out for, I guess, a handful of years now. But I'm, especially as of today, I, I got in a couple missions, but I got back into playing Battletech. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, which, so which, uh, which one, though? The uh, one by Harebrain Schemes, the recent, the most recent one. The oh, one where you, the, the tactical the R- mech strategy one. Yeah, it's like RTS slash XCOM, right? Something like that? Yeah, right? it's more XCOM than... Yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about. Mech Warrior XCOM, basically. Yeah. And like there's you're running the mercenary company, you have pilots, and then you have the mechs, and like you do contracts for money and salvage rights. And yeah, then, yeah, like, okay, yeah. I, I had this one. Yeah, yeah. This oh, oh now I got now game game you, another game to make me replay. <laughs> Dust oh. it off. <laughs> Dude, and I have all the DLC good one. for it. I think all the DLC is great, but it's one of those like, I'm gonna pick this up, maybe do a mission. Mm-hmm. Eight missions later, I'm like, Fuck this <laughs> because it's 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 got that really nice kind of procedurally generated. You know, there's a campaign you can play and you can go along with the story, but like each of the story beat missions, you gotta be you gotta be fucking ready. Like you gotta have the right mechs and the right equipment, and that's where this game really shines. Is like 
you can go off and do random contracts, build up your company's rep, uh, build up your your money and resources. Mm -hmm. And but the the real shiny part of this is the mech customization. Like if you're in, yeah, I, player, I do remember. Like yeah, you you could like you know high level of customization to it. Huge. Like there's all kinds of different weapons and and loadouts and you could customize to your heart's content right down to like how many layers of armor you know you have on each part of your mech because and you have to do it in such a way because everything adds weight mm. and each mech chassis has a maximum tonnage that you can put on it and yep. then and then to keep it challenging some like missions will limit you to a tonnage limit so that like you can't just walk in with top of the line mechs and like if you're over tonnage you'll get uh, penalties mm -hmm. to your uh, payments. So it really is, it's very strategic. Like you really got to think on your feet and you have to understand, again, it, it uh, there's a board game apparently that I've never played, but it, it plays very close to that where it's like, even like when you play Mech Warrior, you know, which is the, the action arcade version of this where you're in the cockpit, but it's the same principle, like you gotta keep moving and, and keep your evasion rate up so that you're mm -hmm. not getting you know hit with full blasts of stuff. And you know, is it time to punch out and save your pilot and just ditch the mech, you know, and eject your pilot into orbit so that you can harvest them because their abilities, like the pilots will level up, you know, and, and you can customize what they're good at and they get really good, just like XCOM soldiers. And if one of them dies, like you really feel yeah. that it's, like, it's the the brain drain, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's an older game at this point. I would say it's probably. I want to say that game came out in twenty twenty, maybe even, maybe even earlier. But um. Oh yeah. Uh, it says release date twenty eighteen. Oh, twenty eighteen, and it's so it's, a, it's still six fantastic. Year old game. Yeah. It looks great. It plays great, and uh, yeah, I've I've got back into that one hard. I was wondering if you played that before. That's why I wanted. To oh yeah, uh, yeah, I picked it up. It's, it's it been, you know, I say forever. You know, it's probably. I think I played it when it came out, so five, five or six, you know, years old, at this stage. So yeah, it's. It, it, but it's worth a dust off because yeah, like oh. like like I said, it's it's so fun. All the customization, all that. Yeah. Oh, and right down to looks too. Like you can customize your paint. Oh, mm -hmm. it's really good. So yeah, I've I've really been enjoying that. But uh, yeah, so. Any any uh, anything watching? I mean, I already went over my Fallout thing. You see anything good? Uh, no, I I've, I haven't been watching anything, and that you know, in, in, in any regularity, it's just kind of like whatever happens to be on YouTube <laughs> it comes up in the algorithm. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. nothing jumping out of me yeah, as of recent. Yeah. Oh, we did take the kids to see uh, Inside Out too, which was fantastic. I've heard I don't good know. things. Yeah, I mean, the first we loved the first one. Um. I, I don't know if you saw it. Fantastic Pixar movie. I think it was Pixar. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, Pixar, yeah. So good. And it, I don't know if Pixar and Disney are just on a really raging success kick, but, like, I thought the sequel, the Frozen 2 sequel, was better than the first one, and I lo we loved the first one. Mm -hmm. I'd say Inside Out 2 was better than the first one, and I, I wow. loved, loved that movie. And the, the way they just bring it forward to deal with uh, a kid in the movie who is quite close to our oldest uh, age range now. Mm -hmm. And Amber Amber just kept nudging me. She's like, yep, that's all coming. Get ready. I'm like, yep. <laughs> sleeping in the fucking shed. Oh, boy. <laughs> I won't even put electric out there. I'll sleep in the fucking dark in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But uh, all right, let's get into some news. It's been a little quiet. Uh, yeah, no, was... Nobody seemingly shot themselves in the foot in the past couple of weeks. Well, all right. Let's not go that far. <laughs> a apparently, uh, Dr. Disrespect can't stop talking uh, to uh, Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah that, that debacle. Oh, man. Oh, what is up? Like, uh, again, I know there are people that really enjoy his stuff, and I'm not commenting on that. I'm really not. It was never my cup of tea. I'm never out to see anybody fucking lose their shit. But. When you're a scumbag, I like watching you burn. And I hate to, to put it like that, but everything that I've heard in the past, like, two weeks, like, uh, what is it with people when they get famous where they're like, you know what I'm going to do? 
going to message minors. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh wait. man. Uh, so, yeah, that that was the shooting yourself in the foot with a fully automatic weapon with explosives tied to it and then laughing about it, I guess. I don't know. But it's fucking it, it, crazy. It, it always boggles my mind. And part of it is because, you know, I've been in, you know, corporate all, all my, you know, uh, yeah. Same. career and so we have constant you know i say constantly it's like a- annual attestations and trainings and all this of just like don't be an asshole don't be a piece of <laughs> shit it's like this is under- sexual harassment this is bad it's in, in- this box if you agree to not be <laughs> a piece of shit yeah like- but then then i realized like for uh, you know the, these entertainers. You know these. these it, it always seems to be you know, like granted, granted Hollywood has its own mess of stick things um, right. you know, as well. It's like you know not immune to that. Um, but it, it certainly seems like content creators are yeah, more like, susceptible to this. Or like as soon as they get big, uh, you know, or, or or have been big for a while. Obviously, Doctor Disrespect has been you know uh, you know, Lee, you know one of the one, one of the number first. one. Yeah, yeah, and one of the first um, like big streamers. But it's like, yeah, it's like they, they have no sense of just like, you know, right. what what is sensible, what, you know, and, right. And then then you go then you know. So here here's the thing, and he and he's he and the thing is like he he's done some shit before. Like yeah. I think it was like four years ago. He was he was mm-hmm. uh, cheating on his wife and thing, and he had this big, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd say apology or or, or you know remorse video and but the things like other content creators do the same thing it's like as soon oh, yeah. as they as soon as they find their they've done it uh-oh and it's they've awful. like and that now it's time for me to like crocodile tears on on camera it's like oh woe is me i will never do it again wow. and, and, and they yeah, do it again and they do it again <laughs> and I, just like, don't, I don't know man maybe we're just a and i hate to sound old but like i i cannot fucking imagine like what goes through people's heads like yeah yep. like like you're famous so you're, it's going to be different for you like no you do that and people find out about it you're fucking going away like what the yeah. fuck are you doing or, or just, like somehow you won't get caught or something like this is the internet know, <laughs> yeah that's you know what that's it right there where like i'm sitting here thinking like i'm sure there are people like i'm one in a billion like how am i going to get caught and it's like uh in, in this case you're a very well-known public figure who's made their life on the internet pissing off people like that you i don't know like part of his whole shtick is like he's super cocky and like and he obviously could back it up but it was just one of those like there are people waiting to take you down and mm-hmm. like oh my god i just and you know and then again it's like is it really that hard not to be a piece of shit like come on dude so there's that. Uh, in lighter news, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I I did just hear about this today. Thank you for putting it in because I forgot. But Frostpunk two did get delayed uh, to September twentieth after beta. Yes, I, I found that surprising. Like you know, it's like oh, like I, I didn't play the beta. I, I I think I saw a few streams of it. I didn't because mm-hmm. I didn't want to spoil too much of it. Yeah, uh, but I get a sense of like, okay, where is it at? And it's like, oh yeah, this looks great. So I, I didn't look heavily at it. I didn't see any problems when I did watch. Um, but apparently they, they they got a lot of feedback and some things like like, oh yeah, we gotta we we got you know what? Let, let, let's push it back a little bit, uh, make it right, and and we'll release in September. I don't know. Part of me did feel like, wow, this is coming out really quick. Like, and I don't know why. Granted, I I discovered Frostpunk one very late in its uh release cycle mm, and mm-hmm. and got into it you know later on but like when when i heard like two was coming out i was like wow that seems really quick you know even just for a regular it felt like from the t- the day they dropped the reveal to like oh this is coming out x day it felt mm. like that was an un- uncannily like short yeah, yeah very fast period of time so i was like in a way i wasn't too surprised when i heard oh it's getting delayed like i guess it's like part of the course now we figure it's just going to happen but yeah but i mean so. but also this late in the game because I, I i think it was supposed to come out mid end of july mid uh mid-July? yeah i think you're right i think it was it was this month it was some point this month yeah and uh yeah that did seem very late for a delay so i wonder part of me is like you know as a former software developer like what did they find because that must have been 
pretty bad. Like, yeah, I mean, basically, basically, something you know, they found some kind of showstopper of like, oh, yeah. we, we got to fix this now, and then make sure it's not gonna. Yeah, something. It had to have been something big for, for it to be this late to get a delay, especially for something as highly publicized as this. And and let's be fair, high, as highly anticipated as this is. True. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I think that's where the caution's coming from. But yeah, I was I was surprised so late yeah. in the cycle. But um, the other news that I was really excited, and then this just came like 10 minutes before we, we did the show, because I was like, you know what? I, I remember we saw the demo for this game. I think we did a, a watch and and like we went over it in one of our episodes. But one of the games we saw at one of the conventions or, or, or game fest was that Star Trucker. Yes, I've been looking and forward to this one. Me too. And like. I have not heard much of anything. So I was like, what is going on with that game? Like, I really want to play that. Like, I love the idea of like 18 wheeler in space. Are you kidding me? Like this, the, the whole concept of like over the road trucking and fucking outer space oh, sounds yeah. like a blast to me. And you know, everything I saw in the demo, like the interior, like it looked so believably sci-fi, but like exactly what you would think a space truck would be like if we kept, things that made like hauling trucks trucks like yeah well it, it's almost like it. uh, uh, something straight out of uh well i think i think it's literally called star trucker with uh yeah. dennis hopper oh really uh, oh yeah yeah it's like it's it's like from the night it's like super cheesy 90s like you know, like you you want a super cheesy 90s dennis hopper like you know around the time i, I either before it had to been before uh like water world but like around that era oh i had to um, check that out absolutely hilarious like you like do not perfect. take it seriously <laughs> oh perfect i can't wait to see this but yeah it, it's like it's like, it, like it, it's what comes now granted they're not going that level of cheese with the game it seems but <laughs> but in in the high level concept of like oh okay space trucking and and oh. things like that because like yeah like uh in the in the movie the basically they have literally like the the you know the forward part of the the ship it's a truck yeah. And yeah, you know, it's like you're hauling this long cargo thing. So it's like it, that's what like, stuck that out of my mind. Oh uh, yeah, I I can't wait for it. It looks fantastic. Well, it turns out it's like releasing 1.0 September 3rd. Nice. And it's going to be on PC and Xbox Game Game Pass day one. Oh, excellent! Okay. I, was, I was curious because I haven't I haven't wish list on Steam, but if it's going to be coming on Game Pass, like yeah, sign me up. I, I'm probably gonna still end up buying it because this just seems like the perfect Steam Deck game to me. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I could easily see it. At least you know because I, I did play the demo. I think it was back in February when whenever the the demo Steam demo uh, you yeah know, week was uh, played it played it then and yeah it's like it's like yep that's I'm, right we I'm, talked I'm about it on it. Next Fest because we both yeah Next Fest that's what it was yeah yeah it's like what, what was, whatever they called it yeah but it's the Steam thing but it's like back in February March whatever it was but yeah like had a blast then and it's like yeah it's like okay yeah I, I can't wait for for more of this yeah I'm I'm so like if I had to pick one game that I'm just totally pumped for this year like that's the top of my radar I there's other stuff coming. But I just think the concept of this game looks so great. The the graphics, like the the art style, and just the screens that I see, like going through like clouds of junk in space, just <laughs> looks amazing. <laughs> and then the, the, there's the one you see the one still of like the space highway, and then there's like the green highway signs. Like it, it just looks so clever, and and. I, I don't know. I'm just really, really game to to play that one, and it's two months away. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, and uh, you know what I liked about it. Now it's d different developers, but it very remind me of uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker in terms of just like the quirky yeah. things that the physics engine would do. Because like during the demo, there was like one point where uh, like something something happened, and I needed to go outside to refuel. Yeah, and being an idiot, I did not stop the truck. <laughs> So as soon as I <laughs> opened the hatch and like floated out, all of a sudden the truck just go like, whoop, just like oh. flying away. I'm like, well, this is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that it has that. Isn't yeah. It so it's, it's like, again, all these like quirky, like, you know, physics based things that will, you know, will happen, you know, every, and even from like refueling on the outside where like your gas cap will slowly start like kind of like tumbling away type of thing. Oh, like, oh. dude, how great is that? Yeah. So it's like, a demo for it. 
uh, well, it's it's gone now. Like uh, the, oh, the demo okay. was only during Next Fest. Oh, um, shit. So oh, okay. yeah, 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 I know. It's like once they took it away, it's like, oh man, I want more. Give me more. <laughs> yeah, because I I did play that demo during Next Fest, and I was like, I'm so hyped for this game. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's that's two months away, man. Like for as quiet of a year I, as I was pretty much counting on this being. Oh, there is one uh, big. Well, I don't know how big this one's going to be. The the first Descendant comes out tomorrow. Uh, it's a new uh, looter shooter, free to play. Who knows. It looks interesting. I'll check it out. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV has the new Dawn Trail expansion coming tomorrow. The uh, one yes. that I'm pretty excited for, though, Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak, the English version, gets released on Friday. Um, I've talked about the Legend of Heroes series a few times on here. Uh, Trails in the Sky, uh, Trails of Cold Steel. They're phenomenal rpgs uh but they are jrpgs through and through long games like really long games but what makes i think the the legend of heroes series so special is each series whether it's like trails in the sky that has three games and it sticks with the same usually the same cast of characters and it's the the same region of the world you know or slightly expanded on like you'll run into a lot of the same people in the same cities, like in the sequel games, and all the stuff you've done, like layers into the story of this entire world, and it mm. just makes it very you get very attached. And um, this trails through daybreak is sounding like this is a like everyone's calling it one of the like for at least the what I'm seeing of the series one of the best RPGs ever, and. They're saying it's also probably the best Legend of Heroes game that's been made and the perfect entry point for people who have not played Legend of Heroes yet and like just want to get a, a really great RPG that will get you introduced into this world. And uh, it comes out Friday. I'm actually really excited for that. As I, I put that series down for a little while just because I had put in so many hours into uh, Trails in the Sky. And I'm still working my way through that. That um, I was just like, I gotta play something else. Like, I just need a little break. I I love my characters. I love this world, but I just need a little break. And uh, but it, this has pulled me right back into it. And it's just like the most well written. You know, it, it touches on all kinds of themes, and just it really does it in a mature way. And what sounds so great about this one is like, there's a lot of like morally gray you know choices mm. and, you know choices matter it's, and they're saying it's the darkest one and they're kind of dark games to begin with but just like you know people die etc etc like it's it's it sounds great like it sounds very deep and i'm i'm really looking forward to uh to jumping into that well that comes out on uh friday you can actually buy it on steam right now but it's it's uh yeah, it won't release until then right it, yeah. Well, no, you could actually play it right now if you know oh. uh, Japanese or Chinese. I forget. Which uh, one. Oh, oh, so it's, the English isn't turned on. Right? So yeah, Falcom, like... Falcom turns the English on on Friday. Or is it gotcha. Falcom? Yeah, so that comes Friday. Um, highly recommend it. Like, if you're looking for a good RPG to really, like, sink those, like, JRPG teeth into, this is the series to do it. Like, it's, it, it's kind of picked up for me where like final fantasy has lost a step for me and it's it's fantastic so yeah mm. good stuff but um let's see i think that's pretty much it did you have anything on anything else on the game plate that we didn't cover i'm just i feel like i've been yapping forever no <laughs> like it, it, like you know it's just it, I'm, I'm kind of in this mode of just like okay i'm just kind of waiting waiting for things to you know potentially drop or just come out of nowhere and keep an eye out for that really you know, yeah it's nothing you know, too much is yeah that's the thing like nothing you know like everything you mentioned is like yeah it's like okay i gotta you gotta, gotta add to the list of things to check out but nothing's uh really like you know hitting the radar too heavily yeah um, they're in the coming they're... months no, like that Star Trucker was like the first thing I'd seen yeah. in a while. We're like, oh, yeah. oh, sweet, start the countdown. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, game, but yeah, everything else has been it's all right. We'll see what happens, but um, but yeah, all right. So we'll start uh, wrapping it up for episode ninety-seven. 
Um, as always, if um, you want to hang out with us, you know, we got the save point. Go check that out at uh, tinyurl. Uh, I think it's slash the save PT. Uh, come check out the save point, our Facebook group where we hang out, talk games, and one of us, uh, or Jim, my friend, will start throwing up uh, GOG sales and Steam sales <laughs> uh, for stuff that is good. And just come and talk about your favorite games. You can call us uh, on our voicemail line and leave any kind of commentary or, or thoughts or something you feel we should talk about and cover. You can do that and leave a message at 610-810-1654. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, we'll give some shout outs. Obviously, the, the people listening and uh, getting the word out for us. Uh, some casts that, that I've listened to and been very much enjoying. Uh, Geeks Gone Raw with Chase and Blue and the crew, and uh, I'm, I, I am definitely providing I don't blow my knee out again. Uh, <laughs> we'll be going on their show uh, a week from today and recording with that crew. I'm really looking forward to finally doing that, especially after just one thing after another coming up and not being able to do it. I'm really looking forward and, and appreciate Chase's patience uh, with me just getting myself uh, to get over there because I'm I'm really excited to sit and talk with those boys. And then uh, on second thought with Mike and Matt uh, again the the bad fodder figures some half of that crew uh, they've they've been doing just really good shows I'm really enjoying it. If you enjoy just the, the kind of banter we have here uh, and you just want to hear two other people talk games and life or just life in general, Mike and Matt are great. They're a fun listen over on. The- on second thought the other one that i continue to stalk and follow is my boy los over at the talking place uh he just uh that guy i love los i i could not imagine like just doing a show like i feel like i need I, i need someone to talk to but like he is just great at just talking about something or then bringing people on to talk about you know whatever but uh the talking place is really cool he he tends to find things that then hit my wallet like book club memberships <laughs> and shit um it's very cool but yeah check out the talking place um finally let's see oh you, know, you can email us if you like the retro at gmail.com uh and that's pretty much it uh twitch nick is black eagle ops uh, I haven't stalked you in a while. I don't know. <laughs> have, you haven't been streaming for a while, have you? Uh, I usually only stream on Sundays. All right, so then it's just me not paying attention. Cool. I'll have to I'll have to stalk you on Sundays. And uh, but yeah, so that will wrap it up for episode ninety-seven. I hope everybody has a safe, happy, fun Fourth of July. I hope everybody is going to be able to get some time off relax, recharge, and make sure to, you know, keep all ten of your fingers uh, inside the ride at all times. Uh, <laughs> this is the weekend where somebody will no longer have all ten of them. Yeah, very and true, it, very true. And it, it could be you. It could be you. <laughs> but other than that, folks, stay safe. Thanks for hanging out with us. We look forward to hanging out again in two weeks. Uh, until next time, have fun. Play games and don't be dicks.